Hi everyone, Kamran Nuri here. This video is on the application of Gauss law to the problems with the spherical symmetry. We have a spherical symmetry when the charge density depends only on the distance to a point, which is called the center of the symmetry, and does not depend on the direction from that point. Here we only consider special cases of this symmetry when the charge density is constant or zero. In this video, we applied Gauss law to find the electric field inside and outside of a spherical shell with uniform surface charge density. Then we find the electric field inside and outside a solid sphere of uniform volume charge density. Here are the animations of these two cases. We will come back to these with more explanations later in this video. Now we're going to talk about spherical symmetry. Let's first start with a spherical shell that has a uniform charge density on the surface. It, it has radius r. The charge is only on the surface. There's nothing inside. There's uniform charge is q on it. And we want to find the electric field as inside or outside. We already know the answer to this, right? But we want to use Gauss law to do that. If I want to find the, let's say, electric field inside, what, what can I do? It's a, a spherical symmetry. So from symmetry, you can say which direction is the electric field. Radial, yeah, radial either inward or outward. It cannot be any other than radial. Why is that? Because if it has any component other than radial, it distinguishes one direction from any other direction, which is not right. So the electric field is only radial. And because of the di different directions are equivalent, the electric field magnitude is the same in all directions, or it only depends on the distance, right? So, therefore, if you take a Gaussian surface that is an, a sphere, concentric with that sphere, and with the radius in such a way that passes through the point where you want to calculate the electric field, all right? A spherical Gaussian surface concentric with the sphere and passes through the point where you want to calculate the electric field. Then you can apply Gauss law and you, you can say the electric field on, on this surface everywhere is the same magnitude and everywhere is radially outward or, or inward. Right? And then you say integral of E dot dA, integral over this surface E dot dA. Any dA that you take is outward from, this <coughs> from the surface. And uh, electric field is also the same direction, right? It's radial. So E and dA are in the same direction or opposite direction. It becomes E times dA. And E is the same all over the spherical Gaussian surface. Then E comes out. So this integral e dot dA becomes uh, just e times total area. So that's q inside the i pi epsilon naught. <coughs> First, the dot product becomes normal product, and then e comes out, it becomes just e times the total area, which is 4 pi radius of the Gaussian surface squared, equal to how much charge is inside? Zero, because now there's no, there's all the charge is here, there's no charge inside, so that's zero. And because r is not zero, 4 pi r squared is not zero, e has to be zero. So e is zero inside, when r is less than r. Does that make sense? <laughs> this, of course, as I said, Newton could figure out. Of course, he was thinking gravity. Because uh, if, you, if you make a cone and, and this way and continue the same cone the other way, 
he, he figured that the gravity of this part and this part are the same always. And we make, move the cone everywhere, you get zero gravity inside. But he couldn't do it for the outside. And it took, I mean, he could uh, finally, but it, it took him 20 years to develop calculus to do that. All right? What if R is greater than R? Means we are outside this sphere. And now it, R is this. Again, the same argument, say, because of the spherical symmetry, the electric field should be radial. And the same in all the directions at the same distance. So if you take a Gaussian surface that is another sphere that passes through this point at distance r or radius r, then you can say the same thing. Get e times uh, 4 pi r squared. This is the electric field times the area of the Gaussian surface. doesn't have anything to do with the area of the sphere itself is uh, equal to the total charge inside over epsilon. Right? The same argument is simplified this to that. And then you say, therefore, E should be, what is the total charge inside, inside this Gaussian surface? If the radius is bigger than this radius, then all the charges is in there. So it's Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. Which is the same as putting all the charge at the center and calculating four point charge, right? So that's sometimes called a shell theorem, right? So this is for outside, or if r is greater than r. This is inside. Then R is less than R. Here you see the cross section of the spherical shell as a blue circle and the spherical Gaussian surface in yellow. When the Gaussian surface is smaller than the shell, there is no charge inside the Gaussian surface. Therefore, according to the Gauss law, the E field at any point on the Gaussian surface is zero. This is true of all points inside the shell. However, as soon as the Gaussian surface gets larger than the shell, the Gaussian surface suddenly contains all the charge on the shell. In this case, as the radius of the Gaussian surface increases, the charge inside remains the same, but its area increases by the square of the distance. Therefore, the E field decreases by inverse square of the distance to the center of the shell. This means that for points outside the uniform spherical shell, the shell acts like a point charge, as if all its charge is concentrated at its center. The plot on the right shows the magnitude of the electric field at distance r from the center of the shell as a function of r. As you see, the field is zero when distance is less than the shell radius capital R and is kq over r squared like a point charge when R is greater than capital R. This is called the Shell Theorem. Now watch the whole animation and pay attention to how the field changes as the Gaussian surface radius changes from 0 to 2.5 R. Now, what if we have a solid sphere? We have a solid sphere with uniform charge density. Uniform volume charge. <laughs> now, the charge Q is the same situation. The charge Q is spread through its volume. Now, uh, let's, this, is, this is the sphere. It has radius R. And Q is spread uniformly over its volume, not on the surface. Now we want to find the electric field outside and inside and everywhere. So what is the electric field outside? We can do exact same thing, right? Can take, we can say first of all, if there is electric field because of the spherical symmetry it has to be radial yeah. and the same at any direction, the same distance. 
Therefore, a spherical surface, a spherical Gaussian surface will work. Then we say <coughs> the electric field times the total area equals to the total charge Q over epsilon naught. Therefore, we say electric field is Q over R2. Right, this is this. And again, we can put all the charge at the center. But what about inside? What about if R is less than R? This is for R greater than R. What if R is less than R? Only the charge inside. Yeah, only the charge inside the Gaussian surface that you take creates electric field, right? Now the, the sphere, I, I draw it bigger. The sphere is this, has radius R. And total charge Q in its volume. Now we want to find the electric field at distance R. From the center, R is smaller than capital R, the radius of the, surface, uh, the sphere. What do we do? First, we do the symmetric argument again. So the electric field should be radial. And therefore, the same in all the directions, only depends on distance because there's no distinction between one point or the other. So we take a uh, Gaussian surface that is a sphere of radius r passing through uh, this concentric with uh, the sphere itself. And then we said uh, again with those arguments e times 4 pi r squared is equal to uh, q inside over epsilon. And then Q inside now is not Q, it's part of Q, right? How much is that? Rho uh, times 4 over 3 or third pi R Q. R which R? R. And then I know, small R. R. No, only R. small R. Q. That's the charge inside. All right, that's correct. And what is rho? That's Q over, Q Q Q. over 4 over 3 pi, big R Q. Yeah, and rho is? The total charge divided by total volume, right? Or we can say the total charge divided by four thirds, four thirds pi r q times four thirds pi r q, right? That is four thirds pi cancels out, right? So q inside is total q times r q over r q. Right? All right, so we put that in here. So it gets E times 4 pi R squared equal to Q R cube over epsilon naught R cube. And then you see R squared and R cube, two of them cancel out. So E becomes what? Becomes Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R cubed times R. Now this is for R less than R. It is easier to write it this way. K Q over R squared times R over R. If this is when R is less than R, and E is K Q over R squared if R is greater than R. All right? So you have these for a solid sphere of uniform charge density, volume charge density. If you are inside, it is like the electric field at the surface times the proportion of the R that you have. If you are at the center, there's no electric field. If you are ha halfway from the center, it's half of electric field. If you are three quarters of the way through the surface, you are three quarters of the electric field. So electric field as a function of radius, it changes like this. R and uh, E. E as a function of radius, if R is here, 
and at, at the surface there is some electric field. And then it, from, from center to this R, it goes linear, then goes inverse square law. Right? And you see, this function and this function have the same value as this. You see, if, if R is equal to R, you get KQ over capital R squared. If R is equal to R in here, you get one times KQ over capital oh, R. Don't you have to put equal sign to whatever? Yes, you can, you can have here or here. Both of them can be equal. All right? When the charge is uniformly spread through the volume of this sphere, for the spherical Gaussian surface, the charge inside increases proportional to its volume or with R cubed, but the surface area increases with R squared. So the electric field at its surface increases linearly with R. You can see this feature in the right plot for R less than capital R. As soon as R becomes greater than capital R or the Gaussian surface gets bigger than the charged sphere, the charge inside the Gaussian surface does not increase any longer, but the surface area increases with R squared. Therefore, electric field intensity decreases by square of the distance to the center. And again, the whole sphere acts like a point charge at the center for the electric field outside. Now watch how electric field changes as R changes over the whole range. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and have a great time.